In this video, I'm going to show you three creative ways on how you can use Runway's awesome first frame tool. I'll show you how it can help you take your videos to the next level and to inspire you to create some incredible looking content. Okay, let's get into it. So we're going to be using Runway's first frame tool. I'll give you a quick rundown on what it actually does. First frame allows you to upload a video and then it takes the first frame of that video and then you can give it an alternative first frame in any style you want and it will render that video out in that selected style. I want to show you some really unique ways on how to use this feature. So first up, let's have a look at changing your video into any style. There are multiple ways on how you can change the style of your image. So the easiest way would be to use Runway's image to image tool where you can add in any image and choose from one of the many styles they have. And it does a pretty good job at changing the image into different styles. But my favorite method is using Magnific AI, as it just has a bit more flexibility to it. I've seen a lot of people also use Midjourney's Retexture tool, which allows you to upload an image and then give it a prompt to change the style of that image. So before we get over to Magnific, this is the video that I'm going to be changing the style of. Now, I actually downloaded this video from pexels.com, which is an incredible resource for free videos and images. So if you just want to find some examples to play around with, this website is going to be awesome. Now, the reason I chose this video is I want to see how well Runway works with fast moving footage and to see if it can keep the style going throughout the video. What I do to get the first frame of the video is I play the video through VLC Media Player. And then you can just right click on the video and click on Snapshot. So this will save that first frame to your computer. Then if we jump over to Magnific, so Magnific first started out as a crazy upscaler for AI images, but they've recently added this really cool tool called Mystic, and it allows you to use the structure reference of an image and use a prompt to change it into any style. So let's have a look at some examples that I've created. I've made sure I've got Mystic selected, and you upload the image into structure reference, and you can give it a structure strength. Now with structure strength, the higher the value that you have, the more the image will look like the original image. And you can choose the resolution here. Now if you pick 2K resolution, it pops up with this new menu, creative detailing. They give you some good information on what settings to use depending on what style you want to use for the image. So I've just left this one at about 30%. And you can choose the engine as well. Most of the time I just put automatic, but for this one I've used Magnific Illusio. In the prompt, you can see I've put Studio Ghibli anime style, so I want it to be that kind of illustrative style. So this is the result that it created, and you can move the slider back and forth to see the before and after. And I'm pretty blown away by the results, to be honest. I think it does look like a Studio Ghibli film, and I'm very impressed. And here's another version as well, which I used a Pixar CGI style, and it's even put a little eyeball in the middle there, which is a pretty unique little touch. And this one's pretty cool. It's a cyberpunk style. And here is a what looks like to be a kid's sketch version. And as you can see, it's incredibly different to the original image. So you can get really creative with the styles in Magnific. So I've downloaded some of these images and now let's take them over to Runway. On Runway, just make sure you're on this page, which is the prompt section, and you've got video selected there. So I'll just drag in that motorbike video. And depending on the resolution of your footage, you will have to crop it. So just click on crop. And then down here, click on styled first frame. Now it does give you the option to download that first frame here as well if you don't want to do it from VLC. And then I'll add one of my styled frames into here. So I've added in that anime style image. Now you can add a prompt if you want to, but in my experience, adding a prompt doesn't change much. And then if you come to the settings tab down here, you can change the structure transformation. So with structure transformation, the lower the number, the more it will resemble that initial video you gave it and stick to that structure. So I'll run a few generations, all with different structure transformation values, and we can see how much they change. Okay, so this is with the value set in the middle at five. It looks pretty good. There's some weird movement on the hands, and the style is staying quite consistent. Now, what I do notice is the fast moving parts of the image 
do kind of change style a bit. They kind of go into that more 3D computer generated graphics kind of look. But the bike itself is staying very consistent with the style I gave it. And I think that's due to it not moving that much. So here are the rest of the videos. And I'm quite surprised actually, down at zero, the video looks pretty good. It's actually kept the style very consistently on the bike and the background is looking very kind of computer generated, but I'm pretty pleased with how that's turned out. With the value of 10, the video does change quite a lot. It's really slowed down that movement of the original video and it seems to be sticking to that styled image I gave it. So here's another example that I've tried. I've got this video of a woman running and I restyled the first frame in Magnific to look like this painterly image. Then looking at the generations from this video, we get similar results. As you can see, the lower values are sticking to the motion of the original video. But then with the higher values, it adds a bit of motion, but it's not really nailing it. So I feel like there is a definite sweet spot in the middle of the structure transformation. So it's definitely worth testing out the different structure transformation values to try get the results that you're looking for. You can also get creative with changing scenes from your favorite films. So I've got this clip of the Joker leaving the hospital from the Dark Knight film. And I took the first frame of this shot and created a few different images in Magnific. Then when I ran it through Runway, it creates these really unique looking videos. So it's just a really fun way to change some of your favorite scenes. And here's some examples of other videos where I've changed the style. You can also have fun with mixing different styles as well. So here you can see in one video there are two different styles and all you have to do is make sure that first frame has the multiple different styles in it and you can get some really creative outputs. Hi there, sorry for the interruption. I just wanted to say if you're enjoying this video would you consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel? That would be awesome. Okay, back to the video. Now let's have a look at doing in-painting effects. With in-painting, you're changing parts of the video. So I'll show you an example. Just like that short video you saw with the hobbit walking out of Hobbiton, you might have noticed he had a customized shirt. Now I created this myself and it worked perfectly when using it with Runway. So I created this by taking the first frame of this video of me walking on a green screen and then turning it into this image in Magnific where I prompted it with man dressed as a hobbit walking through Hobbiton. Then I took that image into Photoshop, or you can use the free alternative on photop.com, and I added in LOTR text and an image of a ring. Then when I added that image into Runway, it created this video. And as you can see, the text and the ring on the shirt stays intact and moves in a really realistic way. So with this in-painting technique, it allows you to put anything on your character or within your image, and it will stay throughout the video. So here's another example that I tried. I have this pretty embarrassing video of me wearing my snowboarding helmet and holding a cardboard gun. Then I thought, could I add certain elements to this image for it to be in-painted into the final video? So I went into Photoshop and I used generative fill to add different things to parts of the image and I added a forest background. Inside Adobe, you just click Generative Fill and it will fill that part of the image with what you prompt it with. You can also do the same in Canva as well. So as you can see, I've added some leather gloves, a bandage on the arm, a wolf badge, a backpack, a different helmet, and a painted arrow and some fireballs on the gun. It's very simple and crude, but I just wanted to see if these added elements stay in throughout the whole video when I put it through Runway. And this is the result I got. I'm pretty happy with it actually. As you can see, all of the in-painted sections of the image have stayed consistent throughout the whole video and it's even got some really nice movement. So you can notice the backpack moving in a really natural way and the graphics, the gloves, the badge, the helmets, they're all staying intact. 
Now let's have a look at creating story-driven content. So I'm going to cover a few different things in this section. One of them is using your own props to help flesh out your story, and then I'll show you how using Act 1 can take your videos to the next level. So using props with this first frame feature is really fun. So I just created some random props out of cardboard, so I have this gun, I have a sword and shield as well. So I've got some embarrassing videos of me playing around with the props, and I filmed myself on a green screen. Now this green screen was pretty cheap, it's just a kind of flexible pop-up one, and I'm sure you can pick one up for easily under $50 if you need to find one. And they're extremely useful for situations like this, and I can easily key out the background without manually having to mask me out. So I took this frame into Magnific, and prompted it with a medieval knight wearing armour and holding a dagger and shield. Battlefield environment, warriors fighting in the background, and I think the result looks awesome. It looks a bit weird that I've got a tiny dagger instead of a sword, but this is just an example to show you what you can do with it. And then running it through Runway's first frame creates this video, which is pretty sweet. I'm not sure what the soldiers are doing in the background, but this just gives you an idea of what you can do. The only problem I see with this first frame feature is that any fast moving parts of the video do tend to change a lot. As you can see his arm, the glove disappears, and a lot of the detail just gets smoothed out. So that's one thing to take note of. If you're doing a scene with lots of action, then a lot of the detail can be lost. Another really cool thing you can do is interacting with your environment. So in this shot here I've got myself at home and I just dangled a bit of tinsel down, and I ran it through Magnific, and I prompted it with man in the jungle standing next to vines. And as you can see it's turned that tinsel into vines, and then the results from Runway actually show me moving the vines out of the way. Now this is really interesting as if you put a bit of time and effort into your shot and planning, you'll be able to put props around in the scene and interact with them, and hopefully Runway will create a realistic looking video with you moving those props in the video. I thought it was a cool thing that I played around with that you might find interesting. So this is another video I created with me wearing the helmet and holding the very basic cardboard gun. I wanted to create a gritty Planet of the Apes look for this video, so I took the first frame of that video and added a forest background, then I took that image into Magnific, and prompted it with an ape person from Planet of the Apes wearing a helmet and holding a gun, in a forest with cinematic lighting, and it created this insanely awesome looking image. This is the video that Runway created, which I was blown away by, so I actually filmed a few more shots of myself and turned them into images in Magnific and ran them through Runway just to create a kind of sequence of shots. So when stitched together this is the video it created. And here's another shot which I was going to include in that sequence but didn't end up doing, but it's just of me picking up a knife off the floor, but with overlaying that same style from the ape in the forest video. And it worked really well. This just shows you how you can create different kind of shots to kind of fill in your story if you need to. Then I thought could I use Runway's Act 1 feature to add some voice and facial animation to this video. If you haven't used Act 1 already, it is incredible. I've actually created a full breakdown video just on that feature, so if you're interested in watching that I'll leave a link to it down below. So what it does is you record your face with the performance that you want, and then it will put that performance onto the character in your video. So I just recorded a bunch of different scenes, and this is the result from that sequence but with Act 1. Why is it always me on patrol? These really annoying flies everywhere? Actually, I've got an idea. What about using them for target practice? So as you can see, the first frame feature mixed with Act 1 opens up a whole new world of storytelling capabilities, and with a really lifelike animation as well. So here's a few more examples of videos I've created using first frame and Act 1 together. So for the first example I've added the Act 1 facial animation to the video I created before of the man with the dagger and the shield, and I'm pretty happy with the results. Well this is a pretty epic battle scene isn't it? It's time for action! <laughs> the next example is a simpler shot. It's of a granddad writing a letter to his daughter about how he lost his job to AI. 
Dear Emily, I hope you and the kids are well. Just thought you'd laugh knowing your dad got replaced by a robot named Albert. Apparently, he doesn't need naps. So now I'm officially a full-time couch analyst. Retirement isn't too bad. Love, Dad. I'm really happy with how that turned out. And if you would like to know a more kind of detailed breakdown on how I've created these shots, then please leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to create a video on that. So we've reached the end of this video and I hope you can see just how powerful this tool is. It might just seem like another gimmick AI tool at first, but when you dig in and really test it out, you can get some insane looking results. If you have any tips or tricks on how to use this tool, then please leave them down in the comments below. It would be awesome if you could like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And if you would like to check out another video, then feel free to click the image you can see on screen. Thanks for watching.